Good morning, you two pipe smokers. Smoking the Brivia. I really like this pipe. Uh, I'm really enjoying this pipe. In it, some David off chocolate. I call it Vegas chocolate because they bought it in Vegas. But as usual, you know, I'm thinking about this tobacco subject. And here's another interesting thought. So, it's interesting to me that, like, one Q, um, this chocolate that I got in Vegas, I'm talking about, uh, early morning pipe. Some of those, uh, Edward G. Robinson. Those tobaccos seem to be good immediately. You, you taste them, you like them. Okay. So now, we buy these other tobaccos to try, because you're always thinking that could be the one, that could be the better one. And some you try and you don't like it right from the get-go. Now remember I said maybe some is an acquired taste? But chances are you're never going to give it that chance because you don't like it from the onset. So it'd be like going to a restaurant, trying some new dish that you never had before. You don't like the taste of it. If you go back to that restaurant, there's a good chance you're not going to buy that, uh, you're not going to order that same meal because you didn't like it the first time. Yet, maybe if you did try it a few times, you'd learn to like it because you become, you get that acquired taste that people talk about. You know, when you eat something, some people say, you, you right away make a face, ooh, that's terrible. And then some people say, well, it's an acquired taste. Well, perhaps some tobaccos, it's an acquired taste. You know, again, going with the analogy of switching to coffee, let's say, from uh, cream and sugar to black, it's pretty harsh change. But after three or four days of forcing yourself to drink it black, after a while, you will not want the coffee any other way. I think the same thing is true with tobacco. The only difference is we have ones we like, so you're not going to go back to that tobacco that you didn't like. So that leads to the question, many of us have loads of tobacco that we may not ever give a second chance. So I'm thinking, maybe the wise thing to do is take that tobacco that you've tried it once, twice, and you said, ah, terrible. Either give it away, or buy a big jar, throw that in a jar, throw uh, everything that you don't like in the jar and blend it all together and let it age. And maybe two, three years down the road, that aged jar will become a really good tobacco. You can never duplicate it, but you're going to have so much of it anyway that it may not matter. So that's another something to consider, I guess. Uh, and again, to be clear, I do think it's enjoyable to obtain pipes and tobaccos and try them. but. I know myself, I tend to overdo things, um, that's just my nature, um, like I don't have one pocket knife, I probably have 50 pocket knives, uh, I don't have one lighter, I got 32 of them, you know, um, so same thing goes, everything I do is like that, um, and it's always in the idea that the next pipe or the next knife is going to be better than the last knife. <laughs> Which gets expensive, but that's, you know, it's a hobby. And it's and like Simon did mention yesterday, you're, it is sort of an investment. I mean, you can always sell pipes. Um, I think there'd be a market. It looks like it's a pretty feverishly market if you monitor the amount of pipes sold on uh, smoking pipes. You see all the sold ones, you, you monitor eBay, you see all the pipes that are sold already. 
Um, so right now, there is a market for it. And you see the frenzy at the pipe show seems to be alive and well, thankfully. Uh, I hope it continues. I hope our hobby is not under attack like some of us feel it may be and uh, want to put a stop to it. That would be a real crime in my opinion. Um, but it is what it is. That's, I guess, those type of things we can't change. Um, but, you know, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for some of these agencies to consider the YouTube pipe community uh, as how we feel about it and make adjustments in their policy. Even YouTube, um, I think the pipe community on YouTube is probably one of the closest knit groups of any group on the YouTube pipe community. Because I've been on YouTube many years and the politeness, the camaraderie, uh, camaraderie on the YouTube pipe community is better than any other group I see. Um, so, uh, for some reason, uh, maybe it's because if you enjoy smoking a pipe, you reflect on things and appreciate things. And I don't know. That's probably another big mystery subject. Um, why is it that a simple thing like a pipe can bring people together in a civilized manner? I mean, I, I'll give you an example. I know Simon now through the YouTube pipe community. I never met him in my life. Uh, and I feel I have a friend in the UK. I mean, uh, how do you explain that? I mean, um, I enjoy his channel. I, I like listening to what he has to say. Uh, I think he brings value. Um, he just... It's somebody, if you had the chance, you definitely would sit down with him and have a smoke and talk. I mean, I never felt like that in, a, in other groups. Um, and is it the pipe that did that? Or, I don't know. That's, uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I'm rambling here. But I can't help but think of all of this. And... It dawned on me last night, I'm watching uh, Mr. Grumpy's house, and he's a relatively new YouTuber. Uh, I'll get his link, I'll put him in the bucket there, and uh, you should check his channel out. He's gotten into a little political views, uh, which he's um, passionate about, which... Um, I know it's a dangerous subject to, to get involved in. I try to stay away from it because we all have different views on that. But other than that, um, he said something yesterday that hit home, and he said that since he joined the YTPC, uh, it's, it's changed his life. Uh, and it taught him how to smoke a pipe, and it's pretty interesting. I'll, I'll see if I can find that exact video and put a link to it. Uh, it's worth the watch, and um, uh, he just—it's uh, food for thought, and he makes uh, makes you think, makes me think about a lot of different things. And uh, I think there's a lot of passion surrounding this simple instrument that was invented hundreds of years ago, and uh, it's probably. It's some kind of phenomenon, in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe that's what the peace pipe is all about with the Indians. And smoke and fire has always been like a man's best friend, they said. And maybe that's why it relates to the pipe. I don't know. I guess uh, maybe I think about this stuff too much. Anyway, thanks for listening. Hope you guys have a great day.